Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In our last histogram example, we're going to look at creating a relative frequency histogram. We're going to be using our same frequency distribution that we've been working with. If you're wondering where all those numbers in that table came from, check back to our histogram introduction to see where those values are and come back here when you're ready. Okay, so looking at a frequency, sorry, a relative frequency histogram, we're going to be ignoring the frequency and cumulative frequencies and looking here at our relative frequency. So our heights on our vertical axis, instead of being these whole numbers that we've dealt with in the previous examples, now they're going to be these relative frequencies. So let's start as we have before by putting our labels and titles on our graph. So this is going to be a relative frequency histogram of ages. My horizontal axis is going to hold my classes, so in this case that's going to be age in years. My vertical axis is going to be my relative frequencies, so relative frequencies. My horizontal axis is not going to start at zero, so I'm putting that little squiggle to indicate some missed values. And then I'm going to use my upper and lower class limits for my tick marks on my horizontal axis. So first one being 10.5, then 13.5, 16.5, 17.5, 5, and 22.5. Now my vertical axis labels are going to need to allow me to graph these relative frequencies of about 0 0.208, 0 0.375, and 0 0.042. So I noticed the largest value I would probably need if I was using something nice and easy might be like 0 0.4. So I might choose to label by tenths, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0.4, or noticing that these are kind of in between, maybe I'll even put my little halfway marks, so that would be 0 0.05, 0 0.15, 0 0.25, and 0.35 in between my tenths. So now that I've got all my labels on there, all I need to do is use my relative frequencies as the heights for each of my bars, making sure to make my bars the same width and no gaps. So for my first relative frequency, I have 0 0.208, which is just going to be slightly above 0.2. So creating my first bar. And I'm going to go ahead and put those optional labels on top just to make it easy for anybody trying to read it. For my second class, I have a relative frequency of 0.375. So this would be 0.35 here. So I would be about halfway above that. So going up to about there. And I'm going to go ahead and do my second and third class all at once since they have the same relative frequency and then just drawing that middle bar just helps me make sure that they are exactly the same height more easily. Okay, and then my last class has a relative frequency of 0 0.042. So this little first hash mark on my vertical axis would be 0 0.05. So I'm going to be just slightly below that, maybe about here. 0 .0, 0 0.042. Something you might notice about this, you might be thinking, hey, that looks a lot like our very first histogram that we did with just the regular frequencies. And you're absolutely right. Really, the only difference is what we chose to label by. It is a different graph, but in general, the same shape appears here as did our one with our regular frequency. So when you, if you graph on the same thing, frequency and relative frequency, other than a difference of scale on your vertical axis, they should look pretty much the same. All right, guys, that does it for our histogram examples. We'll catch you in the next video.